Okay. <laughs> okay. So you you asked. All right. So um. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um. Welcome to another video. Hi, this is Marty. Welcome to another video. <laughs> All right. You asked, so I'm going to deliver. All right. So I, you can see what's on the board. Okay. I'll get right into it. Sorry. I'm wasting time. All you INFJs, I'm boring you, right? <laughs> I'm going to say this in this video. I'm going to say it right now. You have no idea, no idea what you have done by asking me to look at this. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so, um, the four functions, uh, according to Carl J. <laughs> All right, the four functions, according to Carl Jung and MBTI and everything, okay, is um, obviously we know thinking, feeling, sensation, and intuition. All right, uh, we have uh, judging and perceiving, uh, which when you look at what's on the board, Everything that is in pink is standard. Anything that is in orange is something that uh, I made up, okay? Or made up, meaning it's mine. So let's just go over a couple of small little things. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I'm going to tear it apart. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, judging, and I have to do this. I have to do this my way. All right. When you think of perceiving or irrational thought, I want you to think of only being able to see the past. So, say for example, irrational thought is. Um, being in a box and only being able to see that direction. And this is forward, okay? So, perceiving or irrational thought is only being able to see rear view mirror behind you like in a car tinted windows you can't see anything but the rear view rear view mirror or out the back eyes in the back of your head and your seat doesn't move and you are strapped harnessed and you are stuck judging or rational thought or past and future i want you to think of all directions. Your seat in the center of your car can spin in all directions and you think in terms of past and future. When judging or rational thought past and future, your Future thoughts are formed and conceived based on your ability and view to look everywhere, including, and importantly, the past. Okay? Okay. Thinking and feeling are associated with judging, 
rational thought, past and future. That symbol, if you don't know anything about relational database design, that is a many to many relationship. Okay? Think of it this way. A school, right? You're in school, right? Okay. Well, if I wanted to create a situation and track uh, the grades or anything within school, right? Pens, like, a, like pens, right? And all the kids in your class, you're a teacher, you had 30 students and you had 100 pens and all of them were a different color. Well, how would you be able to track if little Johnny had the red pen if any child can pick up any pen and any pen can pick up any can be picked up by any child, right? Okay, that is what that is, a many-to-many -many relationship. And believe me when I say this, I'll go over later, but not in this video, but another one, why that makes sense, why you need to know that. All right, because I'm gonna draw that instead of saying what I just said. Okay. Sensation and intuition is equal to irrational thought perceiving using your past experience or irrational thought to gauge everything that you do. Okay. Now that's not earth shattering, not at all, but I'm basically teaching somebody or those who've never studied this before, um, well, what it all means and what it all applies to. All right. As it relates to the four functions, thinking, feeling, sensation, and intuition, you're going to rank them, meaning you as a person are going to say, which one is superior to everything else? Then, because there's four, according to MBTI and, and, uh, and uh, Jung and, and this whole thing, right, you have Secondary. Now, I called superior uh, primary, okay? And that's not earth shattering either. Uh, uh, secondary, I called primary supportive, okay? So, for a, a example, if you're going to uh, step forward and the uh, in your past using irrational thought, you basically, the last time you stepped forward, fell down, right? You're going to use another function to help you determine whether or not you're going to fall down again. Okay, make sense? Okay, so that's primary supportive. Tertiary, ter, ter, tertiary, I don't even know how to pronounce that word, but it means third, okay? All right. Maturity, supportive. So as you go through life, according to MBTI and everyone who follows this, you have your superior or primary, secondary or primary supportive, or whatever that word is, maturity and or mature supportive of primary supportive and primary. Maturity supportive or tertiary, <laughs> ter tertiary, I don't, okay. Um, basically means that as you go through life, you are gonna call upon superior, primary, secondary, primary supportive, and a third one as you mature and as you gain a higher level of ability to use, I guess, cognitive functions in a more precise way that can only be done with experience and wisdom. So basically, I think what they're saying is, is that as you move through life, you gain more wisdom and you gain more experience and you are able to use more brain power. Okay? Another one of these right, to help you make better, more secure, and uh, decisions that are going to be self-preserving, save your life, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, 
Then we have number four, or the first, fourth, fourth one, which is inferior, non-supporting at all levels and called upon. So this right here is called upon. So as you go through life, you're gonna use a primary function and a supporting function to give you what you need to know that that's the right decision for you to make. As you get mature and older, you are going to call upon your third function with extra wisdom and extra experience that you gained through life from your primary and your primary supportive, thus becoming even more of a better person, uh, just 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 a, a, a more enlightened, let's say. I don't know what I'll say, okay? And then as it relates to the functions and getting more mature, you're always throughout life going to be able to call upon your fourth function, which has nothing to do with how you exist in life. It's just a mysterious sixth sense, let's call it. But in MBTI and you know the Carl, you know, Carl and all his writings and everyone else, it's inferior to the other three, but it's still always there. Okay? All right. Forming of motivation or forming motivation and developing ideas through your consciousness, okay? And also through your subconscious, but mainly your consciousness. You're gonna pick one as you decide your primary, primary supportive, maturing supportive, and non-supporting called upon four functions that you use to navigate life. And you are going to pick one extroverted or introverted as it relates to this. When you are thinking, do you think about the object, meaning outside? Or when you are thinking, do you first think of subject? or you. And that is what the E and the I mean as it relates to feeling, sensation, and intuition. That's the basics. Now I'm going to pause and I'm going to come back and, because I forgot, <laughs> I, did, I just read this like two hours ago. <laughs> I, okay, I'm gonna. This is full disclosure. Okay, and listen, if this is arrogant or whatever, fine. It's arrogant. I don't know what to tell you. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Okay, it's right now. It's it's 12:20, right on the ninth. Okay, is it the ninth? Yeah, it's the ninth. It's 12:20. Okay, and I read this at. I think I started studying this like at 9:30, 10 o'clock. Okay. All right. Good. There we go. Uh, full disclosure. I'm honest. Right. So hold on one second. And I need to tell you what this other stuff. And I'm going to get a piece of paper because I don't remember. All right. Hold on. Because remember, I can't see you. Oh, my glasses on. So okay. So thinking um, confined to the linking up of representations by by means of a concept. Okay. So basically, thinking is how would you go about conceptualizing, forming um, uh, setting the table for dinner. Okay, that's a perfect example of that. Okay, all right. Feeling, primarily a process that takes place between the ego and a given content, a process moreover that impacts the content a definite value in the sense of acceptance or rejection. Okay. So how, how you, okay, you're going to use your thinking on how to set the table. But while you're setting the table, you're going to have feelings of acceptance or reject or rejection on how you're doing it. Because 
you don't know really what you're doing. So you're either judging, using everything right, or if you've never, if you're perceiving and you've never been able, if you, if you have never set the table before for dinner and you've never been shown, and this is brand new, your rear view mirror is going to, you're not going to be able to do it. And if you try, you're going to freak the f out. Okay. You got it. Okay. All right. So sensation psychological function, which transmits a visual stimulus. Okay. So some, okay. And, and all right. Uh, okay. What I just did was I just did feeling to an irrational thought, but that's not, do you see the problem here? I, I see the problem. Okay. All right. I see the problem. <laughs> All right. So basically, psychological function is a trend, a physical stimulus to perception. Okay. So if I touch a hot pan and it's, and it's burns me, that is sensation. Okay. Step in front of a moving car, get hit, land on back of head, get concussion, forget how you got there, get in the hospital. There you go. Okay. Intuition hunches and visions provides an alternative means of perception to sensation. Okay. So um, if I have a very good intuition, I can look at the pot. It's on the stove without seeing anything. I can use my intuition and say that pot is probably hot. Probably. Even if no one's here and there's nothing in it, I can still use my intuition and I don't have to use sensation to actually touch it. Like if you've ever been out to dinner, and, they, and the guy has a, a cloth on the plate and he sets it down, he doesn't need to say it's hot because the person who's using sensation is going to go, boom, ow, hot. You're using uh, intuition. You got the idea that this meant that's hot. You didn't need to touch it. Okay. There you go. All right. So... I'll come back in a second. All right, so um, I, uh, I got ahead of myself um, and I, I could actually I confused myself, to be honest, <laughs> I did. All right, uh, when I was talking about this here, you know, and I was like, okay, you see the problem? It was like, I, I, I was thinking about something else and I said that and well, I, I, got, I confused myself. Okay, so uh, I wrote something um, here and it's messy, but I, I don't have any else to put it and I don't want to erase any of this other stuff. All right, so remember in the beginning of the video, I said I was going to pretty much shred this. Okay, hmm. all right, so um, here we go. All right, um, your general attitude, okay, um, or generally who you are as a person can be summarized as extroverted or introverted. Okay. Um, I like to look at it like someone who's extroverted doesn't really have a problem speaking in public. Uh, someone who's introverted has a major problem. And if we can summarize it like that with very little gray area, it gives you an idea of whatever your mind of extroversion or introversion uh, means. But I think that makes perfect sense. Okay. So we have here, um, judging and perceiving underneath the extroverted person. And well, basically, as I said, that extroverted person uh, is going to use uh, judging or past and future with regards to their thinking and feeling, which is, which is, which is represented right there. I got, I have itch in my ear. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you have, <laughs> See, you're laughing. You're under. Why is he laughing? Why is he scratching his ear? Just, just talk to me. It's because my head's already on what's coming, and 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 I'm and I'm nervous about what's coming, because I'm gonna shatter this whole thing. Okay. So then we have, <laughs> then we have introversion or the person who, uh, well, you get it. And then we have judging with um, thinking and feeling, and then um, perceiving past with regards to sensation and intuition. And basically, this is MBTI in a nutshell, this whole thing. Hmm. All right. Hmm. 
So this is interesting. If this is the case, and we can take a child, and we can watch him play, and we can watch him grow up, and we can watch how he interacts with himself, his friends, his parents, and in life at age one through five, five through 10, 10 through 15, and so on and so forth, we could ascertain that that child is in fact, and we've been watching them, you are extroverted or you are introverted. Check. Easy, right? Well, then once we decide that, then we can go ahead and say for judging past and future, 360 degree view, how does our little Johnny do thinking and feeling? Then we can go to our other side, which is our irrational and or past for sensation and intuition and basically check Johnny off and give you his MBTI or Carl Jung, Young, what is it? Simple, one and done. But my God, What's missing? His age, Trauma and abuse. All of this is coming from the thinking of consciousness and also inner feelings and thoughts as it relates to subconscious or inner self. But all of these functions deal with a predominant, superior, primary attachment to the conscious mind. If Johnny, from age zero, we watch him and decide if he is extroverted or introverted. What was he at birth? He was an extrovert. How do we know that? Because we watched him grow up. But what happens if our little Johnny who's an extrovert is traumatized and abused between the ages of three and seven for four years. And he is told not to laugh. Not to speak until spoken to. And if he does, he is hit. What will become of our extroverted little Johnny, because we just took two identical little Johnnies for a hypothetical 
discussion on a way to theoretically type a person. Our little Johnny, we watched him grow up to the age of 15. He was extroverted. We looked at his judging and perceiving with regards to thinking and feeling and sensation and intuition. And we found out that little Johnny is A, B, C, D. Our secondary little Johnny, parents divorced, new stepfather. Stepfather comes in at three years old until seven and says, little Johnny, you will not speak until you are spoken to. You will not laugh in this house. And what does our little extroverted Johnny, unfortunate, what happened to him through tra trauma and abuse? He changes to an introvert. If you've seen any of my videos, when the human mind from zero to seven, clinically proven, this is so academically proven, it's silly. The trauma and abuse and neglect and abandonment that creates the borderline, the malignant narcissist, through a chemical balance in the brain, the bipolar disorder, the sociopath, and the psychopath. Our secondary example of little Johnny became a borderline malignant narcissist. So therefore, to protect himself, so therefore, this is what he looked at or looked like. His conscious mind, completely separated from his subconscious mind. Period. End of story. Every single thing he thinks, feels, sensation, or intuition will be changed as a result of him being born an extrovert, but being changed through neglect, abandonment, trauma, abuse, physical, sexual, whatever you want to call it, through the external forces that were put upon him at such a young age. The only way that this works and functions is if there is zero trauma, abuse, neglect, abandonment, end of story. And how do we know that? Because we have descriptions. We have the borderline. We have the malignant narcissist. We have the bipolar that explains the chemical imbalance in someone and their mood regulation as it relates to what's already wrong chemically and then what happened to them as a child. That's what that is. Then we have the growth of the borderline or the bipolar with the malignant narcissism into sociopath and into psychopath, which is the bipolar malignant narcissist through trauma and abuse of the most worst case turning into the psychopath. Now, I'm an INFJ, but I'm a recovering, recovering, borderline malignant narcissist sociopath. I've done the videos on it. What would have happened had I taken this test? Found out what I was at 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. How could I answer questions as our perfect little Johnny, our first example that we witnessed and watched go from a newborn to 15, where we determined with no abandonment, no neglect, 
no trauma, no abuse of any kind. He was an extrovert, thinking and feeling, judging, sensation, intuition, perceiving, using his past. Little Johnny can take the test at 15, at 20, and it's going to be pretty spot on. Pretty spot on. <laughs> okay, okay, see, I, I warned. I see, I did, I did, I did, I did two videos on it. I did two videos on it. And I warned, and I was dramatic, and everyone's looking, I know it, everyone's looking at me like, who do you think you are? The, oh my God, in drama, and, and, and you're not going to step on C.S. Joseph, and you're not going to do it. Until you have done the inner child work, until you have fixed these four years in your life and addressed your inner self, you cannot answer with certainty to know who you are at all, ever, because there is separation from your inner child, subconscious mind, inner child is emotion. Your inner child, your inner self controls your emotion. Want me to prove it to you? I will. When was the last time you got into an argument, you did something, acted some way, and either that night or the next day, you looked back and said, who was that? I don't act that way. I don't do that. That's not me. Yes, it is. That's your inner child. Your conscious mind, it sees, looks out, Walk into the street, get hit by a car, conscious mind won't let you. Why? Because the subconscious mind is more powerful and the emotion will be this. Get out of the way of the 2,000 pound car that is going to put you in a wheelchair or kill you. The conscious mind sees it. How does it know? How, does the, how do the eyes and what it sees know? That's a car, it's coming. It's a feather coming at me. How does it know? Well, we can debate that all day long. But the fact of the matter is this. Your inner child and inner self controls your emotions and that controls you. And the proof that the inner self and inner child controls you is what I just said. That wasn't me. I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. I, I didn't mean to do that. It, 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 that's please forgive me. Yeah, it was you. It was your inner child. Because a healthy person is 90% controlled by their inner self, 10% by their conscious mind. An unhealthy person is the inverse of that. Yes. That's exactly what I just said. So if you haven't fixed your inner self, if you haven't fixed your inner child and you take this test and you figure out what you're doing and you are too young, this is inverted. You don't know who you are. So you are basically taking this entire test and perceiving who you are, wait for it. You ready? <laughs> oh dear God. like that.
Now you're looking at this and you're wondering, well, what does that mean? It doesn't look like this one. It doesn't look like that one. Are you just making this up as you go, Marty? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, basically, what that means is uh, you don't have either one of these. You're in no man's land. Because I can't say that all you have is the rear view mirror. And I can't say that you can't look around. But if you have so much childhood trauma, abandonment and issues, and you are only 15 years old, or you are only 20 or 25, When you combine those things together, you don't have enough rear view mirror. You don't have enough past and future to have that view. So I just made up a new view to explain that that is you based on the fact that you've been only alive for 15, 20 years, you have too much childhood trauma, and the distance between who you are today and your childhood trauma is five years, 10 years? Um, I wasn't kidding when I made the videos with C.S. Joseph, the two of those. I wasn't kidding about his diagram. Um, I studied this for two hours, three hours today, eight o'clock till like, seriously, like, like nine o'clock. It was like, I, give or take, whatever. And it's not arrogance. That's not anything. It's just how my mind works. And uh, I meant what I said. And, you know, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the following. In fact, I'm going to erase this and, and I'm going to erase this and then I'll go ahead and add to the video. That's what I'll do. Okay, that's what I'll do. All right, I'll be back. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Okay, so um, basically, uh, really, really what, what needs to happen is, and, and really this is how it should be, is um, not, not the, the, the right question is not who, who am I? The, 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 the right question is what, what do I, want to be? Who do I want to be? So first, what you would do is you would take the test and you would say, one, what am I? And the key is what am I today? And who do I want to become? <laughs> okay. Um, you can't change who you are at your core. But if your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, don't look like that, and, and, and they are, uh, what is it, oh, like that, like this, and they're fractured, see that? They're fractured. You, you gotta watch my other videos on the subject. And you are full of borderline, uh, borderline personality, um, malignant narcissism, bipolar, because you you haven't you're not on your medication, you you, you haven't done the work, and and then remember, uh, board, borderlines are created, malignant narcissism narcissists are created. The bipolar is a product of the borderline but is made more difficult because it's, it's a chemistry thing. That's the same thing with um, the, well, you can include them all into the, I'm sorry about the sound, the sociopath, but it's the border, it's the bipolar with the borderline and malignancy narcissism wrapped into one that is creating the psychopath. Okay, so just, just real quick, created, 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 born genetic, born genetic, okay? But yet the born genetic 
needs the borderline malignancy and narcissism to create the psychopath. You follow how that works? Okay, all right. With regards to this typing, you can take the test as much as you want, but if you had, if you're a female, you need dad. If you're a male, you need mom. The ability to become strong and secure as a male comes from the, the parenting of the father as it relates to your ability as a growing young man into adulthood to be able to overtake your dad, which means if you cannot overtake your dad and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, you will have a self-esteem that is less than it could or should be. So therefore, having a lower self-esteem in that situation with not with, and also with having abandonment and or neglect and trauma regarding your mom regarding your mom as a male is going to create a borderline foundation with a malignant narcissistic rapper because of the lowest self-esteem and the abandonment and the neglect from the mom how is that individual as a boy going to take this test and figure out who and what he is when he answers questions? How? How could it be right? How could it be accurate? What happens when the same boy fixes that relationship with the dad, fixes that relationship with the mom, and he is a completely different person. Completely different. Now, he takes a test. Now, what is he? I don't need to do this in reverse with the female because it's the same. It just has different outcomes, different wrappers, depending on, and I've gone over that in other videos. It, I, I don't. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Other than this, I'm going to do it. So just it's not a matter of if, but I'm going to say it, or if, or when. If or when I do all of this work with the drawings that were already on the board and the discussion I'm having now, I am going to bring in. Being female, male, uh, this is the R for relationship, to both. And the symptoms and qualifications or qualities that make up the female, male, borderline, malignant narcissist, bipolar, and sociopath. And, and, and as it relates to the importance of each one, uh, damn, I hate that, Border, uh, borderline personality will be equal to the malignant narcissist in, is in, in importance, followed by the bipolar and the sociopath. And the reason why is because it's too simple to state. If you cannot regulate your emotions genetically there is something wrong and you can't you are bipolar then add on female or male then add on trauma or abuse neglect and abandonment dad or mom you see how this all connects it all has to be connected you have to ask very difficult questions, very hard questions. You have to dig deep. You have to reconnect your subconscious mind, your conscious mind. So it looks like that. Then take the test. Oh, and by the way,
I'm 49 and 50, I'm 50 this year. What would I have been at? What would I have taken the test when I was 25? Hurting everybody, everybody in my path, basically. What about at 30? Uh, this is Marty, and we'll see you in the next video.